It had hair all over its body other than the face itself. There are in fact four different types of, uh, you know, what we think of as Sasquatch or Bigfoot. Very wide, pronounced nose. There was also a very ominous uh, odor. Phase one is to identify opportunities. I walked into a small clearing uh, and less than 10, 15 feet away from uh, this enormous creature and uh, it scared the living hell out of me. Phase two is conducting investigations both of witnesses and locations. The size of the thing, it was, you know, four or five feet across the shoulders. Phase three is profiling research areas, what's there, how they move, feeding, things like that. About eight feet tall, I guessed around 800 pounds, it was massive. I had no idea that anything like that existed. Phase four is create an intercept plan. I decided to shoot in the air to see if maybe it would scare it off. Phase five is the intercept and resolve the issue phase. It didn't do anything, didn't react. And then I heard a noise from my right rear and from out behind some brush come another one and walked over by the first one. That's when I decided to do what the dog did. I took off running. Welcome to Witness of the Unknown. Hello everyone, today I'm speaking with Skylar. Skylar, how are you, my friend? Hi, I'm really good. How are you doing? I'm very good today. Uh, Great. You know, I'm just going to let you go ahead and tell me, you, I guess before, you know, you anything you experienced, you know, l tell me what you knew about the subject of Bigfoot, uh, or maybe didn't know, okay. and then and it just you know kind of go from there, just sort of walk us through, um, you know, the very beginning and and from then on. Okay, all right. So uh, when I was little, I guess probably like seven or eight, I think uh, one of my dad's friends brought over a old A and E tape of Bigfoot, and that's kind of where I got my. I really was interested in it and. Uh, when we were watching it, one thing my dad said was, I told him, oh, dad, that's not real. You know, that's that's fake. Because there was also the Loch Ness Monster on it, too. And he was like, well, how do you know that that's fake? And that kind of just got me uh, interested in the subject. And that's kind of all I knew. I didn't really think that Bigfoot could be in Indiana like or anything like that. I thought that was something that was out in California. I didn't even think that it could be a part of my life at all besides just right. you know watching the movies and stuff yeah 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 so would you like me to go ahead and tell there's a lot of things that have happened yeah go right ahead uh, however okay. however you want to proceed uh it, okay. it's totally up to you okay so i'll tell you about this farm first i'll tell you about the layout because it's kind of important for my encounters so it's about a hundred acre farm and it's backed up to uh, the forestry, and I, I won't say where because it's not mine anymore, but so anyway, there's a lot of land and we had one pond and a creek that ran through the middle uh, sorry, there's a tractor going by, might be a little noisy but there was a creek in it and a pond so there's a lot of sources of water, a lot of woods, there was two open fields and we were set way back in the woods, the house woods so we're kind of out in the middle of nowhere and this is uh, farm after farm after farm. This is open, pretty much open land. And the first thing I want to talk about is I was, we had horses. I loved to ride horses. And when my dad was still living there, we used to ride all the time. Mm -hmm. And we used to do night rides whenever the moon would be kind of full or we felt like it's a clear night. We would go out about one in the morning or so and uh, just go ride the horses. So we, since we were back into the forestry, we would ride through the forestry and then come back home. 
on our way back home, there was this log that my my dad's horse was really crazy, and he didn't know how to go over logs, so he would take like 10 minutes to go over this giant log on our way, and this log was in the middle of a really thick pine, like the saplings, so there was a bunch of saplings around. You couldn't even hardly see through it at all. I, I don't even think I could walk through it when I was little, so... We were stuck there. His dad, my dad's horse was trying to get over the log. You know, I was like impatient. And then all of a sudden we smelled this awful, awful dead smell. I mean, it hit us like a wall. And I don't know if my horse freaked out, but I freaked out. So I was like kicking my horse. I was like, Dad, please hurry up. Please, let's go. Because I was really scared. It scared me. I don't know why. I mean, I guess dead smells don't come out of nowhere. So maybe that's why I was scared. But he was like, man, do you smell that? I was like, yeah, I do smell that. It smells scary. Like, let's go. So his horse finally jumped over it, and we took off really fast because I guess my dad got kind of scared too. And he went back the next day, and there was no smell. No nothing. It just was gone. And he looked for footprints. There was no footprints or anything. But that, I just thought that was very strange. And even my dad thought that that was, that was very bizarre. That just kicked off. Uh, <laughs> the many events that were going to happen. So before that, there was a lot of things that are now, I, I've thought about this for a long time because I'm interested in the subject. So I've, I've just thought on these things that have happened. Mm -hmm. And before that, I used to have a golf cart. I would take it out in the field and just sit there and watch the sunset and whatnot. And my dog would be out there with me. And this one night I was sitting there watching the sunset and I heard this really terrible scream. Uh, it was like, I started out like a, like a coyote howl, I guess. Like, ooh, and then it turned into a, ha! Ah! Like, I thought, I've been to an Aerosmith concert, and it felt like somebody had put the amps right next to my head and cranked it all the way up. Wow. It was so loud. I and I was I was terrified. I mean, I was like only eight or something. So I whipped around. I thought something. I thought for sure whatever made the sound was going to be right behind me, but it wasn't. It. I think it came from the creek. Mm -hmm. So I drove my golf cart up to the house and asked my mom, like, "Did you hear that?" She was like, "No." So I drove down to where I thought it was. You know, and I'm just little, and I walked over there, and there's a dead deer in the creek. And oh, that's interesting. Yeah, it was really bizarre, and I told my mom about it. She was like, oh, it's probably just, you know, like some coyotes or wild dogs or whatever, and they probably just took the deer down. But from what I remember, I was just a kid. I'm not going to, you know, say that. I mean, it definitely could have been. I don't know. But it did not look like it, it, there was no, like, scratch marks on it or anything. You know, dogs, I would assume, are pretty messy when they take something down because they're grabbing at the throat and whatnot. But there wasn't anything wrong with the deer, so... It was just floating in the water, which was really strange. And that happened right after the scream. So I'm not really sure. Just just strange stuff. I can't say for sure, but it was just really bizarre things like that. So then the next thing that happened, I was about uh, 10 or 11. I think this, this probably had to be like 2009 or something like that. Uh, I, I, there was a barn that we kept our horses in, and then behind the barn, I could go ride the horse, like, in the pasture mm -hmm. and down by the creek. So I rode my horse down there, and I was always on my horse. That's why most of these encounters happen on the horse. And I, I just rode, or rode him down to the creek, and I was letting him drink out of the creek. And I was just sitting there enjoying, and just looking on the ground, and I saw his head, his head whipped up, and he looked at something, like, straight ahead. So I got down like, to where his head level was, and I, I followed his gaze. And standing, I guess, probably like 200 feet, I guess, it was not very close. I saw what I thought was a person standing in, like, next to the creek. I could only see the waist up, and mm -hmm. it, was right, it was right next to this stump that was, like, half broken off. It was pretty big around, and the stump had to be, like, four foot tall, and then the creek was the bank had to be another four feet at least. And this thing was like waist up from the stump. I, I think it must have been standing on the bank. I don't know. Um, but it was tan. It was blonde, like a deer color almost. And it, I almost thought it was a tree because it was almost the exact same color as the beech trees down there. 
Mm-hmm. So I was like, I was looking, but I could see a face. And I was like, all right, so I better make sure that this isn't a person down here because I don't want to get, like, attacked or I don't want somebody to be on our property. So I yelled, hey, who's here? Who's on our property? And it just stood there and looked and just stared at me. So I was like, okay, that's a little weird. I guess if it was a person, maybe they would come up to me and say, like, hey, I didn't mean to. I'm just, you know, I'm a hunter or whatever because I thought You would think so anyway. Yeah, you would think that somebody, instead of standing still like a statue, you would think that they would come up to you or, you know, wave or something like that. Like, don't, you know, because everybody carries a gun in Indiana, especially if you live on a farm, you know? (laughs) So. Yeah, you kind of want to be acknowledged. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. So I, I stared at it. I guess it had to be like, a minute, or I don't know, it felt pretty long, but I was starting to get a little uncomfortable because I was like, what, what is that? Why is it standing there? Like, I know that that's not another stump because I know that creek and stuff that's like the back of my hand. So I was getting a little, I didn't feel threatened. I was just getting a little uncomfortable because it was just staring back at me and my horse was staring at it. That's the only reason I saw it is because the horse was looking at it. Mm-hmm. So I went back up to the house and told my mom, she was like, well, you probably just imagined it, you know, because I I like to. I was an artist. I like to do art, so I imagine things. I I didn't imagine that. <laughs> I look back now, and I was like, well, maybe maybe I did, because you know I was just a kid. But how could I make up like blonde? I mean, <laughs> sure, that's that kind of unusual. Yeah, it is unusual. And uh, how could I have made up like that color? They're usually black. I've never heard of a blonde one before ever. And even well, you know, besides listening to uh, your shows and reading books, now I have, but. That's what made me think, well, I didn't imagine that. I really did see that. And I should have trusted myself a little more, but once again, I was just a kid, so. So, after that event, uh, a couple of years later, um, I was riding my horse one day. I'll never, I'll never forget this day for the, as long as I live. It was overcast, uh, kind of cold like 70 maybe, 70 degrees, not too cold, but uh, not not a sound in the woods. It was dead quiet. I, I won't even go out in the woods now when it's like that. If it's overcast out, I'm not going in the woods. I, I won't. I refuse to. I, don't, I guess I just associate this event with that. But I, I went to one side of our property that I don't usually go on, and nobody ever did. I'm not sure why, but I guess I know now. And... There's two two ridges, and I was on the far ridge. Like, if you're facing our house from the road, it would be on the far right over close to our neighbor's house because we're friends with the neighbors, and we would ride horses with them. So I was allowed to come over on their property as well as them coming on our property. So I went up there, and I could see their house. I could see their horses in the pasture. So I thought, oh, this is a good place to sit on top of this ridge because it's cool. I can see everything, and it was just fun. And so we started, my horse was really laid back. He liked to sleep. So I just let him have his head, and he kind of drifted off. And I did, too. I laid down on his back and just enjoyed the day. And uh, I was laying I was laying on his neck so I could hear his heart beat. It kind of lulled me into a nap. And as I was kind of drifting off, I was like, I felt his heartbeat, like, start to pick up. I, I thought, man, is he going to have a heart attack? It was so weird. It just happened, like, in an instant. His heart started beating really fast. And then his neck got tight, like, steel cables. I mean, his neck tightened up. I was like, I popped my head up, you know. I was like, what the heck is going on? Because I evidently saw something, and he started breathing, like, <sighs> really, really hard. He was scared. And I've never heard a horse make this noise before. And I've only heard it once that day. I've never heard it before. But you know how the deer, like if you scare a deer, it'll like make that blowing sound? Sure. Yeah, that's what he did, except it was really loud. The horse made it. But I was like, what is like, what is going on? I've never heard him make that sound. And as this was all going on, this only took a couple of seconds. And as this was going on, I heard something hit over to my left side behind a, behind a log. And I was like, well, maybe that's, maybe he saw a squirrel. You know, I don't know. Horses are weird. Like, sometimes not very smart. So I was like, okay, maybe it's a squirrel or something. I don't know. A dog? I don't know what it was. But I heard that. And then he he was getting scared. I mean, he reared up. This horse, like, you could blow dry him with a leaf blower. Like, this horse was not scared of anything. And I was like, oh, my God. 
like I felt like I was gonna die. I was like, this this is serious. Like I've never seen a horse act like this before. So I let go of the reins. They were tied up so he wouldn't trip on them already because I, I like to have. I was riding bareback, so I was like, oh my god, I don't want to be left with whatever is scaring him so bad, whether it be like a cougar or I don't know what it was because whatever it was freaked him out. So I laced my hands around his mane. And he, he reared up and flipped around a couple times his face. He's down over the ridge. I guess I should have explained that. He was looking down over the ridge. So I couldn't really see what, what the heck he was seeing. And this was all happened so fast, I couldn't even look around or anything. So anyways, I gave him his head, and he reared up a couple more times. And I just let him take off. I was like, let's go. You know, I, I gave him his head. And uh, we ran down the hill, and he... He was pretty fast. I was afraid we were going to slip and fall. I, I was like, I was praying, like, please, God, please don't let me be back there with whatever this is. I was so scared. I was like, please don't let me fall off right now or don't let him slip and fall and whatever this thing is is going to jump on us. Because, I mean, he was terrified. So we got out in the field, and I turned him around because I wanted to see what was coming. Like, if there was something coming, I wanted to see it. Mm-hmm. I, I wanted to see what the heck this was. There's nothing in Indiana that should scare a horse that bad. Nothing. We don't have any predators like that now. So I just, I ran up and I told my mom and she was like, man, you're a pale. I was like, yeah, something just chased us out of the woods. Like, I don't know what's going on. So I, I put him up and she was like, well, maybe you should just not ride today. And I was like, all right. So I went down and put him up and he wasn't acting all that weird. He was, I don't know. I was just really freaked out after that. I had no idea what happened. Anyways, I was like, well, you know, my dad always taught me, if you're scared of something, you better go back, and you better, you know, get back on, is, is, is you know, the saying. So, mm-hmm. the next day, I was, I went back up, I had my, we had a house phone that you could take, it was like, wireless, so you could take it, and I was talking to my mom, because I was really scared. I wanted her to walk me through this, I couldn't get her to go with me, she just, I guess she just didn't want to go, but, um, uh, so... As we were walking back up there, I was, it was kind of the same day, really quiet in the woods, no sounds at all. Uh, a turkey ran out in front of us before we went up there, and I was like, okay, well, I guess that's good. You know, if there was something like a cougar or something up there, they would have got that, maybe, sure. uh, or they wouldn't be hanging around. But, uh, yeah, so I, I continued up. I almost got to where I was that day, and... I, I got really freaked out. I, was, I just had a really weird feeling. Like, I just didn't feel right. So I told my mom, I was like, all right, I'm going to come back down because I'm, I'm not brave enough to do this. <laughs> like, this is weird. And as we were walking back down, I heard another set of footsteps. It sounded really loud to me because there was leaves on the ground. I think it was fall. Mm-hmm. And I was like, man, that sounds kind of strange. Like, it sounds a little too noisy. So I stopped him, stopped my horse. And over to the left, which is down over the ridge again, same spot, or not the same exact spot, it was over the same ridge, I heard something walking, crunch, 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 right next to us. And I was like, all right, that's weird. And it was stopped. It stopped just a couple steps after we stopped. So I started up again, and it started up with us again. And I stopped, and it crunch, crunch, stopped. And it was just, I mean, it had to be like, 10 or 20 feet. It was just, the ridge was sloped enough that, yeah, it, the ridge sloped enough that you could, it was like flat for a little bit, you could see, and then whatever, if, if somebody could have been standing like 30 feet and you'd never see him, maybe even 20 feet, you'd never see him. <laughs> so, I was like, all right, I'm getting the heck out of here. I'm done. And I told my mom, I was like, all right, so I'm going to go to the neighbor's house because I just, I want to ride some more, you know, I'm not going to let that. Uh, deter me. I'm a kid. Nothing, you know, scared me that bad. <laughs> right. So, so the neighbors had a field of corn, and I had to stay out of the corn with the horse because it would trample it. And to go to their house, I had to go next to this ridge to get over there. So as I was walking over that way, and there's a, I want to tell there's a creek to my left. And then a bit, it slopes, you know, like I was talking about, the, the ridge is really steep. Mm-hmm. And it slopes down to the creek, and then there's a, the creek is pretty deep down, and there's like a five-foot bank, maybe. And uh, as I was walking, I heard something coming, like, 
fast, and I was like, oh, God, here it comes. This is, this is the mountain lion or something. I always thought it was a mountain lion for some reason. Uh-huh. But it, I heard something coming down this hill, and then it was there was a patch of grass in between me and the creek, and the grass had to be, like, I don't know, like three feet tall. It was pretty tall grass. But whatever was coming down the mountain was mowing this grass down as it was coming, and I was like, all right, we're out of here. So we took off running, and I looked behind me and I didn't see anything. I was like, well, was that like a bus charge by the cougar? Like, because it was low to the ground. Nothing tall was coming. I could see it mowing down the grass. So I was like, all right, that's just really weird. I, wouldn't a cougar just go ahead and come on if it was going to come at you? Why wouldn't it just come on after you? So later on, my mm-hmm. conclusion was, I think those are rocks being thrown at me. I really do. Because if I remember right, it was like tumbling. Whatever it was coming to the grass was tumbling. Uh-huh. That's the only thing I can think of. I mean, I, and cougars do not stalk you from behind. They stalk you, or they stalk you from behind, not from the side. And mm-hmm. this was to my side. That's the only conclusion I can come up to. Yeah. So that was that, that story. And there's just been some really strange things. And that was a long time ago. But there's been, you know, up until we lived there, there was really weird things going on. Uh, before I was, I was able to remember, and my, I talked to my parents about this, and they told me, well, I knew about this before because I've seen pictures of it. When they first moved in there, they found a coyote skull shoved between two trees. Like, the body was rotten and the skull was shoved between, you know, two trees mm-hmm. with force. And they couldn't figure out why. They were like, they always told me, you know, oh, it was just chasing some prey, and its head got stuck between the... I was like, you know, later on, it's like, well, I don't know if they're really that stupid, but I kind of find that a little strange as well. It definitely. Yeah, yeah. Yes, and so later on, uh, you know, I my boyfriend was I was older, like 16 or so, and my boyfriend would come over and help with the farm work and stuff. And we were out. We had a problem with possums getting into our dog food and cat food and whatnot. So, and chicken. I think I had chickens then, too, so they would get into that. But anyways, we would... It was about 11, 11 or midnight, and it was really dark out in the summertime. And we were... We took our 22 out because we were like, you know, oh, we're going to get this possum because it's getting into the food. And we saw it, so we went out there after it with some flashlights and stuff. Our pond is right next to the house. So... We heard this sound like it's, it really surprised us because we thought, you know, maybe the horses are out. Well, we heard this thundering footsteps. Like, it sounded like I heard a horse was running. We were like, what the, you know, what, what is that? I was like, man, the horses are out because they used to get out all the time. Like, dang it, it's midnight. I really don't want to be out there chasing them around because my horse, was, I had another horse. She would just take off and leave and go down to the neighbor's house. So that was a pain in the rear all the time. But. <sighs> This was like 10 seconds I was having this thought. We heard this footprints and, or footsteps. And I asked my boyfriend, I was like, what is that? Is that the horses? And then we heard splash, splash. And then, uh, you know, when deer make a distress cry, they play like, meh, like that sound. Mm-hmm. And they made, well, we heard splash, splash. And then we heard, meh, like the deer screaming in pain. And I was like, it scared me so bad because I was like, that is not a horse. Because there was limbs breaking and stuff. And, you know, horses don't do that unless they're really scared. But I was like, oh, my God, that deer is dying because it was a distress, you know, distress call. I've been, I've hunted before, been in the woods my entire life. I literally was born there. And I was like, it brought tears to my eyes because I was so freaked out. I mean, this was like, let's see, at the edge, I think it was at the edge of the pond. Mm-hmm. And that had to be like maybe 100 feet away. I mean, this was close. And we could, I mean, like the footprints shook the ground. And number one, why would the horses even hurt a deer? Why would it be making that noise? Why would it, why would the deer jump in the water unless it was extremely distressed? Sure. And so we went, we went there the next day and we saw like the grass matted down and stuff, but no footprints. Because by then I I already kind of had an idea of what it was. And to stop, well, I forgot this part. I was so freaked out. My boyfriend was like, I was like, tears were rolling down my eyes. I was like, Carl, like, do something, like, make it stop. And so he shot the gun, and it stopped. Dead silence. It was done. 
that was it. And I was like, oh my gosh, thank you. He was like, you want to go over there? I was like, no, I don't want to go over there. Like, did you just hear that? <laughs> that was insane. So that was terrifying. That, and that's what we, we had that experience together. And also, when we were, we used to go hunting out there too. We were out in the field just sitting by some trees because deer like to come out in the field and we could get a clear shot at it without going towards anybody's house. Mm-hmm. And we heard this like, super loud you know how lions they make the mm, like that sound mm-hmm. we heard it i guess when they call for their cubs or whatever we heard that and i looked i looked at him it was really loud and i looked at him and i was like did you did you just hear that he was like yeah that sounded like a lion or like a cat or something i was like yeah it did and it was just really bizarre because <laughs> there's nothing that makes that sound I don't know this, but do mountain lions, I don't know if they make that sound or not. I don't know if they're big enough to. They're pretty small. Mm-hmm. Right. But, uh, yeah, so I don't know. That was just really strange, too. And he also saw, because he used to, he would take his truck and put it down in the hangar, and we'd move around with tractor equipment with it and stuff. And it was late one night, and we needed the, we needed something from the hangar, because we my, my dad was going to build an uh, airport out there, and so he put a hangar in, and so we put our tractors and all that stuff in there. So he opened that up, and he had to back out of the... It's just a single driveway going up to the <clears throat> hangar, so he had to back up and back into the barn lot to get going up the driveway. Well, he said when he was backing up to the barn lot, he looked and he saw this big pair of orange eyes glowing, and he said he looked... And we had the tractor in there because we had hay bales in there. And he said that the eyes were above the hay bales and above the tractor by several feet above the tractor. I think we, we were talking about this the other day. I think it was, let's see, the tractor has to be, like, the tires have to be at least four and a half or five feet tall. He said it was a good three or four feet above that. And he thought that maybe there's a wolf. Because we'd seen some big dogs around there. They look like wolf dogs. I don't know if they were or not. He thought maybe there was one sitting on top of the tractor. So he, you know, he was just looking and he said later on that he didn't think that it was anything on top of the tractor. He thought it was something standing behind the tractor uh-huh. and looking at him. So he said he got, you know, like we're friends, he's tough and he's been in the woods, you know, and stuff. But he he said he was freaked out. He said he actually got pretty scared with that. He didn't get scared when he heard the, you know, the um, foot beats and all that. He didn't get scared about that, but. He said seeing those eyes, like, freaked him out pretty bad because they were just watching him. And what, yeah, it was just, I and mean, he didn't tell me any of this until we moved because I was so freaked out by all this stuff. Mm-hmm. So, but, yeah, and there was some other stuff I haven't written down here, so I don't want to forget anything. <laughs> I wanted to tell you all the well, sure. so stuff. I didn't want to forget, like, I wanted to tell you all the stuff. Um... We would just always have feelings of being watched, and it was just really, it was a really weird place. Uh, we found, I found tree structures, and what I thought they were woven tree structures, and from what I know, there was nobody else up there that would even, you know, like to do that. Mm-hmm. We, <laughs> we like to scare our friends, because we knew all this weird stuff was happening, and this was before I knew that, like, uh, Bigfoot, like, kidnap people and eat them and stuff <laughs> before I knew all that. We were like, oh, you know, it would be a good idea. <laughs> let's let's take all our friends out in the middle of the night and just go walking around in the woods. So we did that one night, and we had a couple of kids with us, and we had our dogs and stuff, and we got to where those, where I'd found the tree structures, which were above the pond. And, like, everybody started, like, everybody got quiet, and it just got really weird and quiet, you know, just there was no crickets, no nothing, and it was just really weird. And I looked at Carl, and I was like, maybe maybe we should get out of here. I'm getting really uncomfortable. He was like, yeah, that's a good idea. Because we just, it was just a weird feeling. You know, it, it's a strange feeling that you get. It's not one humans usually feel, like the feeling of being preyed upon, kind of right. being watched. That's not a feeling we're used to having because we just sit here in our, you know, safe little houses and we don't get out and we're not, out in the elements and stuff like we mm-hmm. had been our ancestors had to be yeah we have it pretty cushy these days <laughs> yeah yeah we got it pretty easy <laughs> pretty easy but 
one thing that really, really scared me, this, this is not even like seeing it or being chased out of the woods really scared me, but this did. Uh, I, I talked to my mom. She didn't believe, of course, but now she does because I'm older and I'm still saying, Mom, like, this stuff happened. Like, it was really going on while we were there. I'm not making this up. Like, I still believe this. I know this. Mm-hmm. And she told me, yeah. She's like, you know, one night, I just kind of wrote it off as my mind playing tricks on me. She's like, but one night, my mom, she never locked the house or anything because we're out in the middle of nowhere. But I don't know. This day and age, I still would have walked the house as I do because it's it's scary to me. But she didn't really ever lock the door in the house. So, especially this one door that was, it was our laundry room and it went right into our, our where we do our laundry and it went to the garage too. So, she never lost that for whatever reason. And she said she was laying in bed and she said she swore somebody was coming up the stairs. And this house was like stone. It didn't really settle. It was kind of, it was a little bit wood, but this house was stone and it never really settled except for when the air conditioner would come on, it would pop. But that was it. She said she swore somebody was coming up the stairs and she even said, hello, like, is somebody there? And I was like, oh my God, mom, like, I've, you don't know how many stories that I've read about where these creatures come into people's houses and steal stuff or they're just in the house with them. I was like, you probably came really close to coming face to face with something. Did she find and, the door open or anything? No, she didn't. I, well, you know what? I didn't ask her that. And she, you know, bless her heart, she's not very observant. So she wouldn't know mm-hmm. if it was. But I should ask her that. That's a good question. But she said a while back, like when I was little, she remembered uh, she had shut the garage door and you could open our garage door without having a lock or anything. And she said she remembered everybody was gone. It was just me and her in this big house out in the middle of the woods. And she said she'd just gone to sleep and she heard the garage door slam shut. And she woke up and she called the neighbors who were a close friend at the time. Mm-hmm. And had them come over and check everything out, and there was nothing, nothing wrong. It was just, it's just strange stuff. I won't say that that's, you know, Bigfoot related, but it's definitely sure. weird and it's notable. So, it's just, just yeah. And we, some of those things make you scratch your head and kind of go, hmm. Yeah, like I really hope that there wasn't anything in my house with her, because <laughs> that means that there was a possibility it was in there when I was in there too. So. I hope that that's not true, but I've read a little <laughs> too many stories about that to be to completely write that off. But well, I, I yeah. know a couple myself. Yeah, yeah. That's I don't even like to read sometimes because I'm just like some of the similarities are just really spooky, and I can't. I, I'm just luck. I'm lucky to be alive. I used to be out there like all the time by myself in the woods. I'm like, why did I never get like I was such an easy meal? I don't even see why they just didn't come and grab me. <laughs> I mean, seriously, I was my parents just let me run around the woods, and this this stuff was happening. I was, I don't know. <laughs> well, but, it's a good thing they didn't. Yeah, seriously, good thing they didn't. Like I said, I'm lucky to be here today. <laughs> Besides other things, you know, <laughs> living out in the sure. woods like that. But yeah, I don't. I think that was all I wanted to talk about. Um, and you know we hear things walking around at night and flanking right. the house just walking around circling the house and you know my mom would be sitting out there until 11 and I would go in and go to bed and she's out there by herself or just super lucky nothing happened and we would, well, it, certainly, we, we would it, it certainly changes yeah. your outlook on the outdoors doesn't it oh man it does like I, I won't I won't go to the woods without somebody and we have this nice little park, I've, I've told you about it, that has maybe some activity on it. And my dad was like, well, why don't you just go out there by yourself and just do, you know, you don't always have to have somebody with you. I was like, yes, I do. I won't go by myself. I I carry, but that's not enough. I've got to have somebody with me because you just never know. I think that's a good idea. Did you, um, you know, being an artist, did you ever draw what you saw when you were younger? I did, and I was going to mention that. I have the drawing, and it's in my dad's truck but I don't live with my dad, so I will have to get that drawing and send it to you because I did do a drawing. I, I was just yeah, curious because a lot, a lot of people that are artistic mm-hmm. will will sketch, you know, things that they saw. Mm-hmm. Right, yeah. But unfortunately, I wasn't very close, so I couldn't see very much detail, but I mm-hmm. kind of did a blurry little sketch. 
So, and I, I actually said that to my mom. She's like, "Oh my gosh, that looks like a man." Yeah. I was like, "Yeah," and and it, and it did. I was. It looks like the uh, kind of Patterson type uh-huh. Bigfoot is what it looked like. It was. It did look like a man, just sure. blonde all over, and you know, so <laughs> with dark, really dark eyes, mm-hmm. and uh, kind of a kind of a forehead. I guess a big one, not too big, but I could tell that it, its eyes were sunk back and its head pretty good because it was pretty dark. How far away from it do you think you were? I think like it had to be like 200 feet. This was so long ago. It wasn't good. It was sure. yeah. enough distance that I could see that it had a face and that it wasn't a person. Could have been. Kind of looked like it, but it was not mm-hmm. after I got to looking at it really good. But yeah, it also, it was, I don't know if it was, if it was standing kind of next to that uh, trunk, it had to be at least eight feet tall, close right. to it. Mm-hmm. So, because I, I, if I remember right, I really, I went around that stump because the water was really deep there from where it had been uh, pulling around it, so I would always go down there and swim. But I remember how tall that stump was. It had to be that close to that. Yeah. So. Well, very interesting. <laughs> Thank I, I you. Pre- I, I appreciate you sharing that with me. Yeah, that's uh, not a problem at all. I wanted to tell somebody about it. I've been dying to. Nobody answered. The BFRO didn't answer, so I just gave up on them. <laughs> and and like I, I tell everybody, <laughs> what's what's great is, you know, when, when people come forward and talk about things they experienced, it mm-hmm. helps a lot of other people. Um, it does. You know, I, I've always yeah. been amazed over all the years, um, you know, that I've been the first person that someone has told me. Uh, yeah. One always sticks in my mind, you know, that probably 25 years ago or more, mm-hmm. uh, a, a guy told me that he, he had actually seen the same Sasquatch that I had. Uh, yeah. Oh, wow. Se- 17 years before, and his wife happened wow. to come up at that time, and she says, you never told me that. Yeah, and I, I I met the guy in you know, like a minute or two before then. <laughs> yeah. Oh my. God. Well, yeah. I mean, it's. I told my mom and I told my dad, but it took a long time for to get my mom. My dad pretty much believed, and he told me, you know, if you because I was out in the woods and I was talking to him on the phone, and he was like, you know, he's like, if you see something, you better wait until if you see something coming towards you, you better wait until you see the whites of its eyes to start shooting because it's. You know, he believed. He may not tell me, but he, I think he did. I think he got a little more freaked out than he likes to admit. But it could yeah. be. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I, I know, and I, I don't. <laughs> I don't tell friends. You know, my boyfriend knows. He he actually saw um, one in a park close to where our house is. He saw he saw one standing uh-huh. by the road. I didn't get to see it, but he says that he saw it. So he he kind of believes. He didn't. He won't say it. He's really was, skeptical. He keeps me skeptical. So, was this back around the same time period, or? Yeah, it was um, more recent than the other. <laughs> that okay. was just about a year or two ago. So, okay. Yeah, and yeah, and the park. This isn't the park that I, over here that I'm talking about. This is the park closer to the farm, not close to where I live now. Sure. But that park is weird too. There's been some disappearances which I've tr- been trying to research because. People say, you know, don't go into that park, like, after 10 or whenever it gets dark because people get mugged, and there's a prison in there, too. So, oh, wow. Yeah, but people do not go. There's been people who disappeared, and I really would like to get research that a little better because that's find interesting. Out. Find since out what's we going lived, on. Right. Since we live so close to there, and, yeah, I, it's too close for comfort, honestly. <laughs> yes, sir, I, I can agree. Yeah, so weird stuff. Going. Nobody goes to that, that park either, which is really strange because it's pretty nice. I like it. Um, but, yeah, people don't, well, people don't like de- to go up there. Definitely be careful, and, uh, you know, if you if you find anything out, keep me posted. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we'll, we'll be emailing back and forth, and uh, I'll let you know if I find anything else. And So thank That's you awesome. so much. <laughs> well, th- and thank you, and again, thanks for sharing. Uh, now, you yeah. Know, That'll again. It, it always helps everybody else to kind of come to terms with what they've experienced themselves. Absolutely, I know listening to these shows have helped me so much just to figure out what was going on because I always thought I was crazy or just well, making it up. Out, 
you find out you're not the only one out there. Absolutely. That's comforting. So <laughs> I hope I can make somebody feel better and maybe come forward to help others too. Awesome. Well, thank you, Skylar. I certainly appreciate it. No problem. Thank you. You have a good night. You do the same. Thanks, everyone, for joining me this week. Be sure to tune in again next week as we explore another account from a witness of the unknown. To my side. That's the only conclusion I can come up to. Yeah. So that was that that story. And there's just been some really strange things, and that was a long time ago. But there's been, you know, up until we lived there, there was really weird things going on. Uh, before I was I was able to remember, and my I talked to my parents about this, and they told me, well, I knew about this before because I've seen pictures of it. When they first moved in there, they found a coyote skull shoved between two trees. Like, the body was rotten and the skull was shoved between, you know, two trees mm-hmm. with force. And they couldn't figure out why. They were like, they always told me, you know, oh, it was just chasing some prey and its head got stuck between the... I was like, you know, later on it's like, well, I don't know if they're really that stupid, but I kind of find that a little strange as well. It definitely. Yeah, yeah. Yes, and... So later on, uh, you know, I, my boyfriend was I was older, like 16 or so. And my boyfriend would come over and help with the farm work and stuff. And we were out. We had a problem with possums getting into our dog food and cat food and whatnot. So, and chicken. I think I had chickens then, too, so they would get into that. But anyways, we would, it was about 11, 11 or midnight, and it was really dark out in the summertime. And we were we took our twenty two out because we were like, you know, oh, we're going to get this possum because it's getting into the food. And we saw it, so we went out there after it with some flashlights and stuff. Our pond is right next to the house. So we heard this sound like it's, it really surprised us because we thought, you know, maybe the horses are out. Well, we heard this thundering footsteps. Like it sounded like I heard a horse is running. We were like, what the, you know, what, what is that? I was like, man, the horses are out. They used to get out all the time. Like, dang it, it's midnight. I really don't want to be out there chasing them around because my horse, was, I had another horse. She would just take off and leave and go down to the neighbor's house. So that was a pain in the rear all the time. But <sighs> this was like 10 seconds I was having this thought. We heard this footprints and, or footsteps. And I asked my boyfriend, I was like, what is that? Is that the horses? And then we heard splash, splash, and then... Uh, you know when deer make a distress cry, they they like meh, like that sound. Mm-hmm. They made well. We heard splash splash, and then we heard meh, like the deer screaming in pain. And I was like, it scared me so bad because I was like, that is not a horse. Because there was limbs breaking and stuff, and you know horses don't do that. Must are really scared. But I was like, oh my god, that deer is dying because it was a distress, you know, distress call. I've been, I've hunted before been in the woods my entire life i literally was born there and i was like or we felt like it's a clear night we would go out about one in the morning or so and uh just go ride the horses so we since we were back into the forestry we would ride through the forestry and then come back home on our way back home there was this log that my my dad's horse was really crazy and he didn't know how to go over logs so he would take like 10 minutes to go over this giant log on our way. And this log was in the middle of a really thick pine, like the saplings. So there was a bunch of saplings around. You couldn't even hardly see through it at all. I I don't even think I could walk through it when I was little. So we were stuck there. His dad, my dad's horse was trying to get over the log. You know, I was like impatient. And then all of a sudden we smelled this awful, awful dead smell. I mean, it hit us like a wall. And I don't know if my horse freaked out, but I freaked out. So I was, like, kicking my horse. I was like, Dad, please hurry up. Please, let's go. Because I was really scared. It scared me. I don't know why. I mean, I guess dead smells don't come out of nowhere, so maybe that's why I was scared. But he was like, man, do you smell that? I was like, yeah, I do smell that. It smells scary. Like, let's go. So his horse finally jumped over it, and we took off really fast because I guess my dad got kind of scared, too. 
And he went back the next day, and there was no smell, no nothing. It just was gone. And he looked for footprints. There was no footprints or anything. But that, I just thought that was very strange. And even my dad thought that that was, that was very bizarre. That just kicked off uh, <laughs> the many events that were going to happen. So before that, there was a lot of things that are now – I've thought about this for a long time because I'm interested in the subject, so I've, I've just thought on these things that have happened. Mm-hmm. And before that, I used to have a golf cart I would take out in the field and just sit there and watch the sunset and whatnot, and my dog would be out there with me. And this one night, I was sitting there watching the sunset, and I heard this really terrible scream. Uh, it was like, I started out like a like a coyote howl, I guess. Like, ooh, and then it turned into a ha. <laughs> Like, I thought, I've been to an Aerosmith concert, and it felt like somebody had put the amps right next to my head and cranked it all the way up. Wow. It was so loud. I, and I was, I was terrified. I mean, I was like only eight or something. So I worked around. I thought, something, I thought for sure whatever made the sound was going to be right behind me, but it wasn't. It, I think it came from the creek. Mm-hmm. So I drove my golf cart up to the house and asked my mom, like, did you hear that? She was like, no. So I drove down to where I thought it was, you know, and I'm just little. And I walked over there, and there's a dead deer in the creek. And oh, that's interesting. Yeah, it was really bizarre. And I told my mom about it. She was like, "Oh, it's probably just a little." She remembered uh, she had shut the garage door, and you could open our garage door without having a lock or anything. And she said she remembered everybody was gone. It was just me and her in this big house out in the middle of the woods. And she said she'd just gone to sleep, and she heard the garage door slam shut. And she woke up, and she called the neighbors who were a close friend at the time mm-hmm. and had them come over and check everything out and there was nothing nothing wrong it was just it's just strange stuff I won't say that that's you know Bigfoot related but it's definitely sure. weird and it's notable so it's just, just yeah the, and we, some of those things make you scratch your head and kind of go hmm yeah like <laughs> I really hope that there wasn't anything in the house <laughs> because that means that there was a possibility it was in there when I was in there too. <laughs> so I hope that that's not true. But I've read a little <laughs> too many stories about that to be to completely write that off. But well, I, I yeah. know a couple myself. Yeah, yeah. That's I don't even like to read sometimes because I'm just like some of the similarities are just really spooky and I can't. I, I'm just luck. I'm lucky to be alive. I have to be out there like all the time by myself in the woods. I'm like, why did I never get... Like, I was such an easy meal, I don't even see why they just didn't come and grab me. <laughs> I mean, seriously. I was, my parents just let me run around the woods. And this, this stuff was happening. I, was, I don't know. <laughs> well, but, it's a good thing they didn't. Yeah, seriously, good thing they didn't. Like I said, I'm lucky to be here today. <laughs> Besides other things, you know? <laughs> Living out in the sure. woods like that. But yeah, I don't... I think that was all I wanted to talk about. Um, and, you know, we hear things walking around at night and flanking right. the house, just walking around, circling the house. And, you know, my mom would be sitting out there until 11, and I would go in and go to bed, and she was out there by herself or just super lucky nothing happened. And we would, well, it, certainly, we, we would, it certainly changes yeah. your outlook on the outdoors, doesn't it? Oh, man, it does. Like, I, I, won't, I won't go to the woods without somebody. And we have this nice little park, I've, I've told you about it, that has maybe some activity on it. And my dad was like, well, why don't you just go out there by yourself and just do, you know, you don't always have to have somebody with you. I was like, yes, I do. I won't go by myself. I I carry, but that's not enough. I've got to have somebody with me because you just never know. I think that's a good idea. Did you, um, you know, being an artist, did you ever draw what you saw when you were younger? I did, and I was going to mention that. I have the drawing, and it's in my dad's truck but I don't live with my dad, so I will have to get that drawing and send it to you because I did do a drawing. I, I was just That's curious because a lot, a lot of people that are artistic mm-hmm. will will sketch, you know, things that they saw. Mm-hmm. Right, yeah. But unfortunately, I wasn't very close, so I couldn't see very much detail, but I mm-hmm. kind of did a blurry. I put the amps right next to my head and cranked it all the way up. Wow. It was so yeah. loud. I And I was I was terrified. I mean, I was like only eight or something. So I worked around. I thought something, I thought for sure whatever made the sound was going to be right behind me. But it wasn't. It. I think it came from the creek. Mm-hmm. So I drove my golf cart up to the house and asked my mom, like, did you hear that? And she was like, no. 
So I drove down to where I thought it was, you know, and I'm just little, and I walked over there, and there's a dead deer in the creek. And Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, it was really bizarre, and I told my mom about it. She was like, oh, it's probably just, you know, like some coyotes or wild dogs or whatever, and they probably just took the deer down. But from what I remember, I was just a kid. I'm not going to, you know, say that. I mean, it definitely could have been. I don't know, but it did not look like it, it, there was no, like, scratch marks on it or anything. You know, dogs, I would assume, are pretty messy when they take something down because they're grabbing at the throat and whatnot. But there wasn't anything wrong with the deer. So it was just floating in the water, which was really strange. And that happened right after the scream. So I'm not really sure. Just Just strange stuff. I can't say for sure, but it was just really bizarre things like that. So then... The next thing that happened, I was about uh, 10 or 11. I think this, this probably had to be like 2009 or something like that. Uh, I, I, there was a barn that we kept our horses in, and then behind the barn I could go ride the horse like in the pasture mm-hmm. and down by the creek. So I rode my horse down there, and I was always on my horse. That's why most of these encounters happen on the horse. And I, I just rode, or rode him down to the creek, and I was letting him drink out of the creek and I was just sitting there enjoying just looking around and I saw his head his head whipped up and he looked at something like straight ahead so I got down to where his head level was and I I followed his gaze and standing I guess probably like 200 feet I guess it was not very close I saw what I thought was a person standing in like next to the creek I could only see the waist up and Mm -hmm. it was right it was right next to this stump that was like half broken off it was pretty big around and the stump had to be like four foot tall and then the creek was the bank had to be another four feet at least and this thing was like waist up from the stump I I think it must have been standing on the bank I don't know um but it was tan it was blonde like a deer color almost and it, I almost thought it was a tree because it was almost the exact same color of the beech trees down there. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I was looking, but I could see a face. And I was like, all right, so I better make sure that this isn't a person down here because I don't want to get, like, attacked or I don't want somebody to be on our property. So I yelled, hey, who's here? Who's on our property? And it just stood there and looked. Artistic mm-hmm. will, will sketch, you know, things that they saw. Mm-hmm. Right, yeah. But unfortunately, I wasn't very close, so I couldn't see very much detail, but I mm-hmm. kind of did a blurry little sketch. So, And I, I actually said that to my mom, and she was like, oh, my gosh, that looks like a man. Yeah. I was like, yeah, it, and, it, and it did. I was. It looks like the uh, kind of Patterson-type uh-huh. Bigfoot is what it looked like. It was. It did look like a man, just sure. blonde all over, and you know, so <laughs> with dark, really dark eyes mm-hmm. and uh, kind of a kind of a forehead. I guess a big one, not too big, but I could tell that it, its eyes were sunk back and its head pretty good because it was pretty dark. How far away from it do you think you were? I think, like, it had to be like 200 feet. This was so long ago. It wasn't good. It was sure. yeah. enough distance that I could see that it had a face and that it wasn't a person. Could have been, kind of looked like it, but it was not mm-hmm. after I got to looking at it really good. But. Yeah, it also, it was, I don't know if it was, if it was standing kind of next to that uh, trunk, it had to be at least eight feet tall, close right. to it. Mm-hmm. So, because I, I, if I remember right, I really, I went around that stump because the water was really deep there from where it had been uh, pulling around it, so I would always go down there and swim. But I remember how tall that stump was. It had to be that close to that. Yeah. So, well, very interesting. <laughs> Thank I, I you. Pre- I, I appreciate you sharing that with me. Yeah, that's uh, not a problem at all. I wanted to tell somebody about it. I've been dying to. Nobody answers. The BFRO didn't answer, so I just gave up on them. <laughs> and and like I, I tell everybody, <laughs> what's what's great is you know when when people come forward and talk about things they experienced, it mm-hmm. helps a lot of other people. Um, it does. You know, I, I've always yeah. been amazed over all the years, um, you know, that I've been the first person that someone has told me. Uh, yeah. One always sticks in my mind, you know, that probably 25 years ago or more, mm-hmm. uh, a, a guy told me that he he'd actually seen the same Sasquatch that I had. 
Uh, yeah. Oh, wow. se- 17 years before. And his wife happened wow. to come up at that time. And she says, you never told me that. <laughs> yeah. And I, <laughs> I, I met the guy, you know, like a minute or two before then. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my. Well, yeah. I mean, it's, I told my mom and I told my dad, but it took a long time for, to get my mom. My dad pretty much believed. And he told me, you know, if you, cause I was out in the woods and I was talking to him on the phone and he was like, you know, he's like, if you see something, you better wait until if you see something coming towards you, you better wait until you see the whites of its eyes and start shooting because it's, you know, he believed. He may not tell me, but he, I think he did. I think I, there's a barn that we kept our horses in, and then behind the barn I could go ride the horse, like, in the pasture mm-hmm. and down by the creek. So I rode my horse down there, and I was always on my horse. That's why most of these encounters happen on the horse. And I, I just rode, or rode him down to the creek, and I was letting him drink out of the creek, and I was just sitting there enjoying, just looking on the ground, and I saw his head, his head whipped up, and he looked at something, like, straight ahead. So I got down like, to where his head level was, and I, I followed his gaze. And standing, I guess, probably, like, 200 feet, I guess, it was not very close. I saw what I thought was a person standing in like next to the creek i could only see the waist up and Mm -hmm. it was right it was right next to this stump that was like half broken off it's pretty big around and the stump had to be like four foot tall and then the creek was the bank had to be another four feet at least and this thing was like waist up from the stump i i think it must have been standing on the bank i don't know um but it was tan it was blonde like a deer color almost and it, I almost thought it was a tree because it was almost the exact same color as the beech trees down there. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I was looking, but I could see a face. And I was like, all right, so I better make sure that this isn't a person down here because I don't want to get, like, attacked or I don't want somebody to be on my property. So I yelled, hey, who's here? Who's on our property? And it just stood there and looked and just stared at me. So I was like, okay, that's a little weird. I guess if it was a person, maybe they would come up to me and say, like, hey, I didn't mean to... I'm just, you know, I'm a hunter or whatever, because I thought... You would think so, anyway. Yeah, you would think that somebody, instead of standing still like a statue, you would think that they would come up to you or, you know, wave or something like that. Like, don't, you know, because everybody carries a gun in Indiana, especially if you live on a farm, you know? (laughs) So... Yeah, you kind of want to be acknowledged. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. So I, I stared at it. I guess it had to be, like, a minute or, I don't know, it felt pretty long, but... I was starting to get a little uncomfortable because I was like, what, what is that? Why is it standing there? Like, I know that that's not another stump because I know that creek and stuff that up, like the back of my hand. So I was getting a little, I didn't feel threatened. I was just getting a little uncomfortable because it was just staring back at me and my horse was staring at it. That's the only reason I saw it is because the horse was looking at it. Mm-hmm. So I went back up to the house and told my mom, she was like, well, you probably just imagined it, you know, because I, I looked at, I was an artist. I like to do art. So I imagine things. I I didn't imagine that. I look back now and I was like, well, maybe maybe I did because you know I was just a kid. But how could I make up like blonde? I mean, <laughs> sure, that's kind blonde. of unusual. Yeah, it is unusual. And uh, how could I have made up like that color? They're usually black. I've never heard of a blonde one before ever. And my dad was mm-hmm. like, well, why don't you just go out there by yourself and just do you know? You don't always have to have somebody with you. I was like, yes, I do. I won't go by myself. I I carry, but that's not enough. I've got to have somebody with me because you just never know. I think that's a good idea. Did you, um, you know, being an artist, did you ever draw what you saw when you were younger? I did, and I was going to mention that. I have the drawing, and it's in my dad's truck, but I don't live with my dad, so I will have to get that drawing and send it to you because I did do a drawing. I, I was just that's curious because a lot, a lot of people that are artistic mm-hmm. will, will sketch, you know, things that they saw. Mm-hmm. Right, yeah. But unfortunately, I wasn't very close, so I couldn't see very much detail. But I mm-hmm. kind of did a blurry little sketch. So, and I, I actually sent that to my mom, and she's like, "Oh my gosh, that looks like a man." Yeah. I was like, "Yeah," it, and, it, and it did. I was. It looks like the uh, kind of Patterson type uh-huh. Bigfoot is what it looked like. It was. It did look like a man, just sure. blonde all over, and you know, so <laughs> with dark, really dark eyes, mm-hmm. and uh, kind of a kind of a forehead. I guess a big one, not too big, but I could tell that it, its eyes were sunk back and its head pretty good because it was pretty dark. How far away from it do you think you were? I think like 
had to be like 200 feet. This was so long ago. It wasn't good. It was sure. yeah. enough distance that I could see that it had a face and that it wasn't a person. Could have been. Kind of looked like it, but it was not after mm-hmm. I got to looking at it really good. But, yeah, it also it was, I don't know if it was, if it was standing kind of next to that uh, trunk, it had to be at least eight feet tall, close right. to it. Mm-hmm. So, because I, I, if I remember right, I really, I went around that stump because the water was really deep there from where it had been uh, pulling around it, so I would always go down there and swim. But I remember how tall that stump was. It had to be that close to that. Yeah. Well, very interesting. <laughs> Thank I, I you. Pre- I, I appreciate you sharing that with me. Yeah, that's uh, not a problem at all. I wanted to tell somebody about it. I've been dying to. Nobody answered. The BFRO didn't answer, so I just gave up on them. <laughs> and and like I, I tell everybody, <laughs> what's what's great is, you know, when, when people come forward and talk about things they experienced, it mm-hmm. helps a lot of other people. Um, it does. You know, I, I've always yeah. been amazed over all the years, um, you know, that I've been the first person that someone has told me. Uh, yeah. One always sticks in my mind, you know, that probably 25 years ago or more, mm-hmm. uh, a, a guy told me that he's, he'd actually seen the same Sasquatch that I had. Uh, yeah. Oh, wow. Se- 17 years before. And his wife. That it had a face and that it wasn't a person. Could have been, kind of looked like it, but it was not after mm-hmm. I got to looking at it really good. But, yeah, it also, it was, I don't know if it was, if it was standing kind of next to that uh, trunk, it had to be at least eight feet tall, close right. to it. Mm-hmm. So, because I, I, if I remember right, I really, I went around that stump because the water was really deep there from where it had been uh, pulling around it, so I would always go down there and swim. But I remember how tall that stump was it had to be that close to that yeah well, well very interesting <laughs> thank I, you I, pre- <laughs> I, I appreciate you sharing that with me yeah that's uh not a problem at all i wanted to tell somebody about it i've been dying to nobody answered the bfro didn't answer so i just gave up on them <laughs> and and like i, I tell everybody <laughs> What's what's great is you know when when people come forward and talk about things they experienced, it mm-hmm. helps a lot of other people. Um, it does. You know, I, I've always yeah. been amazed over all the years. Um, you know that I've been the first person that someone has told me. Uh, yeah. One always sticks in my mind. You know, that probably twenty five years ago, or more. Mm-hmm. Uh, a, a guy told me that he he had actually seen the same Sasquatch that I had. Uh, yeah, oh, wow. se- 17 years before, and his wife happened wow. to come up at that time, and she says, you never told me that. <laughs> yeah, and I, <laughs> I I met the guy, you know, like a minute or two before then. <laughs> yeah, oh my, God. well, yeah, I mean, it's, I told my mom and I told my dad, but it took a long time for to get my mom. My dad pretty much believed, and he told me, you know, if you, because I was out in the woods and I was talking to him on the phone, and he was like, you know, he's like, if you see something, you better wait until if you see something coming towards you, you better wait until you see the whites of its eyes and start shooting because it's, you know, he believed. He may not tell me, but he, I think he did. I think he got a little more freaked out than he likes to admit, but It could yeah. be. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I, I know, and I, I don't, <laughs> I don't tell friends, you know, my boyfriend knows. He, he actually saw um, one in a park close to where our house is. He saw he saw one standing uh-huh. by the road. I didn't get to see it, but he says that he saw it. So he he kind of believes he didn't. He won't say it. He's really was, skeptical. He keeps me skeptical. So was this back around the same time period, or yeah, it was um, more recent than the other. <laughs> that was okay. just about a year or two ago. So okay, yeah, and yeah, and the park. This isn't the park that I, over here that I'm talking about. This is the park closer to the farm, not close to where I live now. Sure. But that park is weird, too. There's been some disappearances, which I've tr- been trying to my eyes because I was so freaked out. I mean, this was like, let's see, the edge. I think it was at the edge of the pond. Mm-hmm. And that had to be like maybe 100 feet away. I mean, this was close. And we could, I mean, like the footprints shook the ground. And number one, why would the horses even hurt a deer? Why would it be making that noise? Why would it 
why would the deer jump in the water unless it was extremely distressed? Sure. And so we went, we went there the next day, and we saw like the grass matted down and stuff, but no footprints. Because by then, I, I already kind of had an idea of what it was. And to stop, well, I forgot this part. I was so freaked out. My boyfriend was like, I was like, tears were rolling down my eyes. I was like, Carl, like, do something, like, make it stop. And so he shot the gun, and it stopped. Dead silence. It was done. That was it. And I was like, oh, my gosh, thank you. He was like, you want to go over there? I was like, no, I don't want to go over there. Like, did you just hear that? <laughs> that was insane. So that was terrifying. That, and that's what we, we had that experience together. And also, when we were, we used to go hunting out there, too. We were out in the field just sitting by some trees because the deer like to come out in the field and we could get a clear shot at it without going towards anybody's house. Mm-hmm. And we heard this, like, super loud. You know how lions, they make the, mm, like, that sound? Mm-hmm. We heard it, I guess, when they call for their cubs or whatever. We heard that, and I looked, I looked at him. It was really loud. And I looked at him, and I was like, did you, did you just hear that? He was like, yeah, that sounded like a lion or like a cat or something. I was like, yeah, it did. And it was just really bizarre because <laughs> there's nothing that makes that sound I don't know this, but do mountain lions, I don't know if they make that sound or not. I don't know if they're big enough to. They're pretty small. Mm-hmm. Right. But, uh, yeah, so I don't know. That was just really strange, too. And he also saw, because he used to, he would take his truck and put it down in the hangar, and we'd move around tractor equipment with it and stuff. And it was late one night, and we needed the, we needed something from the hangar, because we my, my dad was going to build an uh, airport out there, and so he put a hangar in, and so we put our tractors and all that stuff in there. So he opened that up, and you have to back out of the... It's just a single driveway going up to the <laughs> hangar, so he had to back up and back into the barn lot to get going up the driveway. Well, he said when he was backing up to the barn lot, he looked and he saw this big pair of orange eyes glowing, and he said he looked... And we had the tractor in there because we had hay bales in there. And he said that the eyes were above the hay bales and above the tractor by several feet above the tractor. I think we, we were talking about this the other day. I think it was, let's see, the tractor has to be, like, the tires have to be at least 